Welcome to MetalOp. This video will demonstrate the various functions of MetalOp. First we will open MetalOp. On the first use of MetalOp you will need to enable the macros which is a Microsoft security warning. Just general splash screen After we hit Enabled, it puts in a MetalOp tab uh, in the top of the Excel spreadsheet. So hitting the MetalOp tab shows us all the functions. First we will take a look at the miscellaneous data. This screen shows you various data items you can change uh, from saw blade thickness, you can put in end cuts, you can change your discard length. This will show up in the cut list and it will tell you either to discard or scrap. Um, then there's the units which if you want to go to metric you can change it to centimeters or millimeters. Uh, I use the inch mark. Then the pop up on. You can uncheck that. That's for the splash screen that was at the beginning. You can uncheck that and save it and then you won't get that splash screen anymore. Um, the, you've got the data menu on and CSV menu on. These menus, if you, ha if you do not have AutoCAD, you can turn them, uncheck it, and it will disable these functions. So if you don't have AutoCAD and accidentally click one of these buttons, it will pause MetalOp for a few minutes while it's trying to access AutoCAD and if it's not there it kind of locks the machine up briefly. So by disabling it you don't accidentally execute it. First we will look at the optimize button. Let's go. This, um, the data I've got in here was from our project where we extracted the data. So we will use that curtain wall data. Uh, by default I put in 288 inches. Uh, but you can see in Excel it has highlighted this one as longer than 288, hence the red. So we need to add 4 feet to it to make it 336 inches. 288 is 24 feet, 336 is 28 feet, and then the red goes away. So we hit the optimize, the, you, the optimize button, these are some auxiliary buttons for optimize. This is a linear cut list and stack cut list for L and S. So we will all optimize. It just runs through the optimization, 23 stock lengths, and then puts the information in the quantity field. And then below that, Excel calculates your percent scrap. You can change these formulas. That's why Excel is an open format. Uh, another option you can do is you can highlight multiple tabs and optimize at the same time. So let's take this one to 336. You can hold your control key down, select the second tab, hit optimize, and it does both sheets. Enter the 23-15. Okay, let's go over the optimize uh, multiple sizes. We'll use Let's go through this one. That way we won't have any errors. Um, so you select the optimize multiple sizes and it by default gives you six sizes. They're 12 inch increments starting at 23 feet, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 feet. So some notes on the positions. By default it starts at the bottom position which is F8 and the top position which is V9. The F8 
will put the chart that it draws based on this last row here and then column F it will go 8 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is the start of the chart. And then it'll put the six links with their stock links and percent scrap. On the top position uh, was V2, so it would be over here. Uh, I use the bottom one because it won't interfere with any items. Up here it could potentially overwrite if it ends up in this area. It can end up going down and getting hitting quantities, which then will cause errors. So let's run the optimizer. Um, we're going to keep the bottom position, hit continue, and it'll run through all six stock links. And then it puts it down in the bottom, giving you your stock links and the percent scrap. Okay, next we will uh, do the linear cut list. Now we see in our chart that the 312 inches is the best scrap rate. So we will change this, the extrusion order length to 312. Then we will cut, run the linear cut list. And this shows, it copies the information to the sheet, um, you know, your project name, descriptions, extrusion, the number of uh, stock lengths required, and the linear cut list shows you one stock length at a time and how to cut it. We will go back to the fab sheet and we will perform a stack cut list. This shows it a different way where it will combine. This is one stock length. See if we can find here's a combined one. We're at six stock lengths and you'll pull seven pieces out of each stock length and there's your discard and here's your drop. This is that number that's controlled in the miscellaneous data where if it's 13 inches or above, it will be called a drop. Go back to the fab sheet. So that takes care of these four. The import and export was taken care of in the earlier portions of the video series. Import glass data, export glass data was taken care of. Um, the export CSV file this is a new feature where you can export these the data into a CSV file to create labels or to convert to your automatic saw stop program. We will go through, we'll use this shape. You can export the CSV file from the fab sheet. When you do that, it'll be just raw data. If you perform a linear cut list, then export the CSV file. That way your labels will be in the order that it was optimized. But for now, we will create a export a CSV file from the fab sheet. This window gives you options for a comma separated CSV file or semicolon separated. We'll stick with comma. Uh, you can include the header information. The header information will basically put one, two, three, four along the top. The index numbers, uh, order number. Order number, which is your project number, name. Um, the important information would be your length, quantity, and my opinion, tag. But for now, we will keep all the information 
and then run extraction and it creates the file and then wants you to save it just create a name uh, we'll call it 169018 which is the extrusion number and say save and we will bring up here is the CSV file and here's where the the index is of course our order number was blank that's why it's blank um, and then it just it just fills in the information uh, if we open it up in the note you'll see the see if I can do this let's see edit now we are in notepad and see it is a comma separated and you can see there's a comma after each piece of data close the CSV file the metal op um, and then lastly uh, there's an export to FOM CSV file. FOM is a FOM saw which gives additional information for the FOM saw. I have created a custom master fab sheet for people with the FOM saw and it gives more information where you can put in cutting information for angles for this multi-purpose saw. So next we will go back I want to talk about some of the data that we created from our sample project and I stated where we had a let's go back to AutoCAD real quick and look at one of our in this project we had a 1600 screw spline system from Conier where the back member is two pieces but we only extracted data for one like the 169003 or the 169007 and also in the corner I was talking about these two extrusions go back to metal op this is the SSG corner so what I do for my fabricators I highlight the tab, I right mouse click, move, and I will make a copy. Put it right there. Um, I usually change the color of the tab so I know that I created it. And then I will uh, we'll make that a 162. Two five five um, inside cover, and you just change the data. One six two two five five. Call out the description, and then you've got a second fab sheet for that extrusion, and you can make your cut list from that, along with the one six nine zero. Zero seven, same thing, right mouse click, move copy, and then perform the same function. It's the SSG mullion. Um, and that will be a zero zero eight SSG mull. And that's how you make your additional fab sheets. Let's talk about one thing with creating um, for manual data entry. Um, for those of you who don't have AutoCAD to extract the data, 
you just start with the master fab sheet you fill in your elevations A B C D and you can just start entering data you know it would be like a million one million two You know your quantities, um, and then you know eventually you'll run out of space, and you'll need to make new rows. And I just highlight the various rows. I stay in between the first row and the last row. Right mouse click what you highlighted. Copy. Right mouse click again and hit insert. Copied cells and that copies everything adding more rows same way with columns if you want to add more elevations you know I stay between the first one and the last one highlight them right mouse click copy and then you'll paste inserted columns The next item, you talk about the glass sheet. This is a glass sheet where you I put in my glazing tag. Uh, let's go to one already done. This was from our project. Where you enter your DLO information. Once I've checked it, everything's good. I will add my glass formulas. And then that will show up here. This will be basically my order sheet which would be this information and of course with curtain wall on the captured part that's these will be a DLO plus one inch for the width DLO plus one inch for the height on our SSGs for example the SSG1 on our width it will be captured on the left SSG on the right so it'll be a half inch on the left for the glass one inch on the right for the SSG joint so it'll be plus one and a half inches on the height stays DLO plus one inch the SSG2 is the corner and that would be captured on the one side which is a half inch and then on the right side we went to the glass so we will just make it a half inch so this is the instructions on how to use Metalop thank you for using Metalop.com and CADtools.com please feel free to come back and look for new options new CAD information thank you